Hello everyone, welcome back. So, I'm making this video because I've noticed a common problem that players that are newer to openings have been running into. And it's in the Two Knights Defense Fried Liver Attack. And I know this catches a lot of players because I actually used to use this same exact trick all the time. And so I just kind of wanted to make a video kind of giving an express version of some of the main pitfalls to avoid. Okay, so this is kind of the starting position. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6. Right, now knight to g5. This is kind of the signal you're going for the fried liver attack. Some players say this is like a not as great move to make because they're saying you're moving a piece twice in the opening, something you're not supposed to do, right? But the idea here is you're attacking f7. And this is a, a good move to make, by the way, even if some people say it's, oh, it's moving the piece twice in the opening, that's grandmasters play this. So anyway, the idea you're attacking f7 twice. This is already where a lot of players that, you know, haven't learned about this trick, they make a mistake. Right. I see players sometimes play h6, and then you got knight f7. Here's the main threat, forking the queen and rook. Right? Some players notice that's the threat, and they say, oh, I don't want to let my queen and my rook get forked, so they play rook to g8, but then that just fails to bishop takes f7. Right? Now, you, now you're still in a fork. Another idea I see is queen e7, but this also doesn't do too well because, again, Bishop takes f7, and you don't want to trade your queen for a knight and a bishop. You don't want to do that. So, now we're faced with, how do you defend this? The best way to defend is to sacrifice a pawn. And in the process of sacrificing the pawn, you wind up getting a lot of peace activity. So the idea is pawn d5. Main idea, shut down this diagonal. If you're the black pieces, this is what you do. Now, if they take, this is another mistake that I, I see something happening here. A lot of players as the black pieces will take this pawn on d5 with the knight. This is something, again, you shouldn't do. The real move you should do is knight a5. We'll explain that in one second. The reason why you don't want to do this is because of knight takes f7. Okay, you're forking the queen and the rook, and some players have already noticed, well, can't you just take the knight? And yeah, the, the king is kind of compelled to take this knight. But then you start running into some problems because, okay, queen f3, this knight is pinned, and it's attacked twice. Notice it would really like to go back to f6 to block, but it can't because it's pinned. And here already, again, the black piece can run into a lot of trouble. Okay, so you can kind of find out by elimination Okay, you don't want to go to g8 because you get mated, right? You don't want that to happen. Another thing you might notice is, okay, if you just go back to e8, well, now you're just, you're just down a, a point and you can't castle. So you don't want to do this either. So you figure out that the only real option the black pieces would have is going to e6. And then you got the king in the center of the board right from the start of a game. And, okay, if the black pieces can manage to survive this, then they'll wind up with an extra piece in the end game. So that's really good. But in the meantime, you got to find a way to survive this because the white pieces are going to, okay, they're going to bring in all the, the pieces here. Okay, they're going to play knight to c3. You're, you're attacking the knight that's pinned. The black pieces, okay, they, they can go to... You know, try to support the knight with like knight e7, but then, okay, d4, and the white piece are going to try to blow up in the center and go after the king. So, you know, uh, uh, you got to worry about that if you're the black pieces. Uh, better is knight to b4. Okay, you're, you're threatening a fork and you're trying to counterattack. But, again, this king's got to be extremely careful. I have played some blitz games where players have intentionally went for this as the black pieces, I guess... They're thinking, hey, if I survive, I have the extra piece. Uh, but uh, I don't know that I would recommend this idea for the black pieces to me. 
That seems pretty risky. I don't know. Maybe I should try this intentionally now just to see how it goes. I think I might do that. Okay. Ah, uh, but anyways. Uh, okay, like C6, defend the knight. You, you kick this game. You know, this, this just... Uh, this is extremely dangerous for the, the black king here. I don't want to go too far into this. I'm just going to show, like, the first ten moves because... You know, I, I don't think that it's likely your games are going to look exactly the same way, but I'm just kind of giving you the ideas, and then, you know, you can, uh, in your game, kind of understand the strategic ideas, and then you can find moves, even if they don't play the exact moves that I'm showing you, you'll kind of be able to understand the basic idea is just send everything at the enemy king. You know, play like Paul Morphy, you know, and just go after the king. Okay. Now that we've established what can happen if they take with the knight on d5, let me show you the main way people will play this. The main line would be knight a5. This is this is the main move here. And okay, knight on the rim is usually dim, but in this case you're trying to kick away the bishop. Bishop b5, check, takes, takes. And remember how I said we're sacrificing the pawn to get some activity. Well, you look, the white pieces, okay, h6, now this knight gets kicked around, and you can see the white pieces are getting kicked around a little bit. And this is kind of just a sample of how things can go. Uh, I've seen many different moves here. I've seen bishop c5, bishop d6, uh, queen to d4. Uh, I think queen to d4 is one of the more irritating ones, although uh, according to computers, uh, it doesn't actually like queen to d4 as much as like bishop d6 or bishop c5 at least on my computer. Uh, I think it's more irritating though because you won't, you'll have to play f4 and okay, like if they take, you know, you know en passant, you can retreat, but uh, they'll probably do this and then threaten mate and you gotta move your rook. And I, I think that's kind of irritating, although it is supposedly better than the main variations, which would be bishop d6, d4 takes, takes and here the position if you put this on a computer it says 0, 0.0 perfectly even which is interesting for a computer to say that is kind of interesting to me because normally computers heavily favor material most of the time and so for a computer to say that the black pieces are even when they're down a pawn you know that's saying that they do have quite a bit of activity here okay and, you know, you could get a game like this. Some players like the extra pawn the white pieces have. Some players would prefer, you know, the activity of the black pieces. I remember playing this quite a bit as the white pieces side. And uh, I still do sometimes. I have tried it out as the black pieces a little bit as well. Uh, but uh, I'd say I probably prefer the extra pawn. I'm greedy. But I don't know. Maybe a... Uh, Maybe I'll have to put a little more uh, into seeing what it's like for the black pieces, and I should give it, you know, a little more of a chance, I guess. Because, uh, you know, it, you do get a lot of, you know, attacking possibilities if you're the black pieces here. A lot of activity. All right. So those are kind of some of the basic ideas for this opening. You know, some of the main things I see people falling into. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.